Hello everyone, here we are back to talk about uh, multiple regression uh, and the concepts of moderation and mediation. And to talk more about moderation and mediation, I've already had quite a lot to say about moderation and mediation. I have more to say, which I think gives you a different perspective on it for understanding more about it in a deeper way with details that you may not have heard before. So let's get started with our, with our continuing attention to these ideas of moderation and mediation. And we'll start out by erasing what I wrote here. So we have some room. Now I mentioned, I mentioned to you uh, that you know we, we have the essence of a regression here, which focuses on multiple regression. But here we're going to take a particular look at moderation and mediation, which is different than we've done before, because we want to take a path analysis, a path analysis perspective. on um, moderation and mediation. Now path analysis um, is a form of regression. Um, basically everything within the general linear model is a derivative of regression and path analysis certainly is a regression uh, technique. Um, <clears throat> And it provides an opportunity to uh, look at uh, moderation and look at mediation in, in a fuller and more flexible way than we looked at it before. So let's do that. Okay, so the first thing I want to point out um, are characteristics that are important to keep in mind about moderators. So it should not be any surprise if we're talking about moderators, we're talking about moderation, right? And so we're talking about moderator variables, okay? And <clears throat> moderator variables um, are stable variables, okay? So they are stable variables. Um, and when we talk about moderation, what our concern is and what we're testing for, we're concerned with conditions of effects. So when we talk about the effect of one variable on another variable and we're testing a moderator as, as it concerns that effect, uh, what we're testing are the conditions under which the effect occurs of one variable on another variable. Um, or we can also be looking at the conditions under which the effect occurs at different strengths. So under some conditions, the um, effect may occur in a strong way, strong effect. And under other conditions of the moderator, the effect may occur um, only weakly. Okay, so a weak effect. Um, and as I mentioned, it could be that under some conditions, the effect occurs, and under other conditions, the effect doesn't occur at all. So the conditions under which one variable affects another variable is the concern of moderation. Okay, so let's talk about this idea of moderators as stable variables. Um, basically, the idea of a stable variable is a variable that sustains itself at a particular level over time and is not particularly responsive to the effects of other variables. Now, this really has to be understood um, in, a, uh, in a flexible way, 
okay? Because it needs to be, we talk about a stable variable, uh, and later when we talk about fluid variables uh, as it concerns mediation, um, we need to be thinking about the context of our research, uh, the history of the research, um, as to how uh, variables are understood, how they're treated, um, and the particular research questions that we're asking. So you can't make, uh, well, let's, let's put it this way. There are um, many variables that we may call being stable um, under, w w within certain uh, research contexts, but under other research contexts, we may regard them to be more fluid. Uh, so we don't want to be taking absolute viewpoints of what a stable variable is and what a fluid variable is. But within the context of the research that you're doing and the history of that research and how variables are treated within that research and the particular research questions that you have, um, when we're talking about tests of moderation and variables that are serving as moderators, uh, we are talking about stable variables. Um, and some variables are more reliably regarded as stable than are others. So for example, personality variables, like with the big five personality model. Um, so openness to experience, conscientiousness, extroversion, agreeableness, uh, emotional stability. Um, personality variables are reliably understood as stable. Okay, that they are seen as variables that uh, sustain themselves at a particular quality um, uh, in terms of, or level in terms of people being higher in their openness to experience, other people being lower in their openness to experience, or some people being higher in their agreeableness, other people being lower in their agreeableness. The idea is, is that as personality variables, uh, these variables are more stable over time and less responsive to uh, effects from other variables. Um, but you also have stable variables that would be considered stable uh, within a particular research context and, and, and history of, of the, the history behind particular research and particular research questions. But within other research contexts, other histories of research, other research questions might be considered to be more fluid. So, um, we also have stable variables, variables that we consider stable variables that can be tested as moderators, such as job satisfaction. Uh, job satisfaction can be understood as a moderator, uh, can be understood as having this more stable quality. But as we'll see when we talk about mediation, it's also uh, within other research contexts, other research questions, it's also possible to understand job satisfaction as a more fluid variable one that is responsive uh, to the effects of other variables. Um, so in that case, you have, um, uh, you have less reliability in terms of whether a variable like job satisfaction is understood as a stable variable or a fluid variable. So we have to understand stability of variables and fluidity of variables within the research context we're in, the history of that research, our research questions, so I just want to point that out to you. But generally speaking, moderators are stable variables. They're variables whose presence and level is considered to sustain it, itself over time and not to be subject uh, to the effects of other variables. And as we talked about, we do tests of moderation. We're concerned with conditions of effects or the conditions under which effects occur or don't occur or occur at different strengths. All right, then mediators. So here is moderators, tests of moderation. And here we have mediators. So tests of mediation. And mediators are fluid variables responsive to the effects of other variables. 
And we're talking about mediation we're concerned with and we're testing for mechanisms of effects. So often we discover the effect of one variable on another variable as a direct effect. That's how we initially discover it. But an assumption that is made is that the effect is actually more complex than that and it involves other variables. And there are other variables that the effect works itself through to ultimately affect uh, the dependent variable. And these other variables uh, can be understood as mediators and then these would be examples of uh, mediation. Um, and so as we identify more mediators or more variables that mediate the effect of a particular variable on a dependent variable, then we're learning more about the mechanism of the effect. So with mediation, we're concerned with mechanisms of effects. And if you remember from a trailer you may have seen, we talked about the seven things that um, moderators and mediators or moderation and mediation have in common, but it was like a little spoof there because the seven things just had to do with, word, with letters, with letters that they shared in common. Because in fact, moderation and mediation have nothing in common. They, except that they sound, you know, like an alliteration, like in, po like in poetry, you, can, you put them together in a, in a nice way, you know, moderation, mediation, let's go on a vacation, something like that. You can do that with it. But beyond that, they have nothing in common, except for one thing. And that is they do address the issue of how can we understand the effect of one variable on a dependent variable in a more complex way. Uh, as being um, that effect being influenced as to whether it occurs or not or occurs at different strengths by a moderator so this is concerned with the conditions of effects or how we can understand the effect of that variable on a dependent variable as occurring through other variables so here we're talking about mediation and mechanisms of effects so this represents understanding effects at a higher level of complexity. So that they do give us and they do share in common. But outside of that one thing, moderation being concerned with conditions of effects has nothing to do with the, effect, with, with, with the um, concern of mediation, which is concerned with, the, with, with mechanisms of effects. And, and, and mediation's concern with mechanisms of effects has nothing to do with moderation's concern with conditions of effects. So they do represent two separate independent concerns. And so in that, in, in that way then, they don't have anything to do with one another except for their general common feature of introducing us to how we can understand effects in more complex ways. All right, as I said about moderation, I'll say here again about mediation, how you understand fluid variables uh, needs to be understood within the context of the research you're in, the history of that research, the particular research questions that you're asking. Um, because what can be considered as a fluid variable uh, within one research context, in particular uh, uh, research questions, might be in some other re in, in some other research context and other research questions be considered more stable, um, and so we we talked about job satisfaction. Uh, there are instances of where job satisfaction can be seen as responsive to the effects of other variables. Perhaps how positive the work environment is, and as the work environment becomes more positive, perhaps people start to become more satisfied with their jobs. If we understand job satisfaction in that way, it has a more fluid quality and it's more responsive to the effects of other variables. Uh, but it can also be understood as a more sustained quality over time in terms of one's satisfaction with one's job. 
So again, that can vary. And so for a variable like job satisfaction, um, it, it has less reliability in terms of whether it's understood as a fluid uh, variable or a stable variable. Again, it depends on the context of the research and our particular research questions. But then there are also fluid variables that are reliably considered to be fluid variables as being responsive to the effects of other variables, like how, how, like how a person feels um, a, a, over a particular period of time during the day. Uh, that is seen as being very uh, fluid or very responsive to external events that the, that the person is experiencing. Or a person's mood uh, for uh, their experience over a particular day can vary from uh, the, the morning to the afternoon, or perhaps it has a more sustained quality over the day, but then can be very different the next day in response to certain variables. So in that case, how a person feels during a particular period of time during the day or a person's mood uh, reliably is considered to be a fluid variable um, and can be tested as a mediator, but cannot be tested as a moderator, okay? Because it's a fluid variable and we're talking about tests of moderation, our variables need to be stable. Tests of mediation, they need to be uh, considered to have this fluid quality or responsive to outside uh, variables, outside effects. Okay, so the takeaway point I want you to take away here is if we're talking about moderation, we're concerned with the conditions under which effects occur or, didn't, or, or don't occur, um, or the conditions under which effects occur at different strengths. Uh, whereas we're talking about uh, mediation, we're concerned with the mechanisms of effects or the variables through which effects occur from one variable to the dependent variable and the variables that intervene in between or the mediator variables. So the mechanisms of effects and over time identifying the mechanisms of effects. That is the concern of mediation, okay? All right, so now let's go ahead and take a look at a simple path diagram that can illustrate some of these ideas. So let's say that we have a concern for the effect of salary on, I'm gonna move this over here just because I think it's gonna be more helpful as we've seen it, on organizational commitment. And uh, we're also concerned, and this is a path diagram, by the way, so people who have looked at other videos, you haven't seen this before. So this is a path diagram as part of a path analysis. Okay, here we have positiveness of work environment kind of went outside the box there and here we're concerned with testing for a particular mediator job satisfaction here within the context of this research, we're considering it to be a uh, more, more fluid variable responsive to how positive the work environment is. And then the effect of job satisfaction on organizational commitment. So this is an example of testing for mediation or this particular mechanism under which uh, positiveness of work environment affects organizational commitment. We're asking, does that effect occur through the mediator job satisfaction? Here, we're looking at the effect, and you'll notice there's a direct effect of salary on organizational commitment, but we're asking the question as to whether age of employee moderates or influences that effect of salary on organizational commitment. And perhaps under some conditions of age, 
you have an effect of salary on organizational commitment, um, but, other under, but under other conditions of age, you don't. Or perhaps you, under some conditions of age, you have a strong effect of salary on organizational commitment, but under other conditions of age, you have a weak effect. So it could be the presence or absence of an effect or strengths of effects that age influences in terms of the effect of salary on organizational commitment. So here we're, here we're testing age as a uh, moderator. So this is a test of moderation. And when we do a test of uh, moderation, we do what we call, uh, we condition the moderator. So we may measure age as a uh, continuous uh, variable. Um, persons put down their birth date, for example, and then we can calculate what their age is. So it's a continuous variable along a range of ages. And perhaps we'd find the mean age of all of the participants in our sample. And then we'd go one standard deviation above that mean age and one standard deviation below that mean age. That would be one way of conditioning the moderator into two different levels in this case. And if we did that, perhaps we would find that if we go one standard deviation over the mean age, we have older employees who are 50 plus years of age. And when we go one standard deviation below the mean uh, of age of, of our employees, so now we're talking about our younger employees, uh, it's employees who are less than 30 years old. Okay? And so these are the different levels uh, of the moderator that we're going to be looking at in terms of how they may influence the effect of salary on organizational commitment. Now here with the, um, with the uh, mediator in our test of mediation, what we're proposing here is positiveness of work environment has a positive effect on job satisfaction. So as the positiveness of the work environment goes up, so does job satisfaction. Positiveness of the work environment go down, so does job satisfaction. So when we're talking about a positive effect, we're talking about the measures of the variables moving in the same direction, up and down with each other. And that is job satisfaction uh, increases, we're seeing a positive effect on organizational commitment, that organizational commitment increases as well. And again, that positive effect means that as job satisfaction goes down, organizational commitment will go down as well. So again, the measures are moving in the same direction up and down with each other when we're talking about a positive effect. But the larger effect that we're talking about here is not the effect of positiveness of work environment on job satisfaction and the effect of job satisfaction on organizational commitment. The larger effect that we're concerned about here is that we are proposing that we have a positive indirect effect of positiveness of work environment on organizational commitment through job satisfaction. So we're proposing uh, this particular view because we could add moderator, excuse me, we could add mediators uh, later to this mechanism. But right now we're testing a particular mediator here in terms of job satisfaction. Uh, we're proposing a particular mechanism by which positiveness of work environment influences organizational commitment. We're testing the idea that it has that effect um, indirectly on organizational commitment through the mediator job satisfaction. So that's what we're testing here. So we're not just concerned with these individual effects here, positiveness of work environment on job satisfaction job satisfaction on organizational commitment. Our real concern is testing for, in this case, a positive indirect effect
of positiveness of work environment on organizational commitment. So that as the positiveness of the work environment goes up, one's organizational commitment also goes up. As the positiveness of the work environment goes down, one's organizational commitment goes down through the mediator job satisfaction. So that's what we're really concerned with testing here is the presence of this positive indirect effect testing job satisfaction as a possible mediator in terms of this proposed mechanism of effect that we're, that we're looking at here, okay, with this potential mediator. All right, so here we have then an example of testing moderation with our moderator age and testing for this indirect effect or mediation, testing uh, whether job satisfaction serves as a, as a mediator of this effect of positiveness of work environment on organizational commitment, and thus looking at this particular mechanism of effect, testing whether it is in, in fact uh, uh, significant. Okay, so let's just take a quick look at um, what we would expect to see uh, if we had um, a significant uh, interaction effect, that'd be a significant test of moderation. Um, and here we're testing for a salary by age, it's known as an interaction effect or test of moderation, moderation effect, interaction effect, they're synonymous with each other. So this would be a salary by age interaction. And um, as a direct effect, we may be saying that the effect is positive. So as salary goes up, we're proposing that organizational commitment goes up. Salary goes down, organizational commitment goes down as a direct effect or a main effect. But now we're asking, well, okay, but might that effect of salary on organizational commitment be influenced by the age of our employees? And so perhaps we have something that looks like this here. Let me move this up quickly. Just give us a little bit more room in looking at this salary. Salary by age interaction, running out of room here, there we go, uh, age being the uh, moderator that we are testing here. And so here uh, we have organizational commitment as our dependent variable. Here is salary, and we're interested in the effect of salary on organizational commitment. The effect of salary on organizational commitment. And here we have our moderator that we're testing, age. <clears throat> and this would be age of employee. So I can make that Y a little bit better. There we go. And here we have older employees, which are 50 years plus. And we're gonna have that be a solid line. And then younger employees, have, and that's uh, 30, uh, less than 30 years of age. And that'll be a dotted line. And we're gonna have to scrunch this into our graph here, but hopefully we'll get the basic point that perhaps we find that we have a strong effect of uh, salary on organizational commitment for our older employees, but perhaps we find that for our uh, younger employees, we have a much weaker effect, perhaps no effect of salary on organizational commitment. And so if, if we saw something like this, this would be an example of a significant salary by age interaction 
Our test of age as a moderator was significant. Um, and what we'd be saying is that you just can't say that salary has a positive effect on organizational commitment because whether the effect exists or not uh, depends on the age of the employee. Or maybe it exists for both older and younger employees, but it's considerably stronger among older employees and much weaker among younger employees. And so we have to take the age of the employee into account to understand how salary um, affects organizational commitment. If on the other hand, for younger employees, we saw something like this, this would be very parallel. It wouldn't have to be as parallel as that. It would be saying that we don't have a significant salary by age interaction. Age is not serving as a significant moderator that the effect of salary on organizational commitment is a positive effect and an equally positive effect regardless of the age of the employee. And so there, age would not be influencing the effect of salary on organizational commitment. Okay, so here we've talked about tests of moderation. Uh, here we're looking at a test of this particular mechanism of the effect of positiveness of work environment on organizational commitment through this test of the mediator job satisfaction. And so here's a test of mediation or this particular mechanism of effect. Um, and so there's moderation and mediation for you from a, a path analysis perspective. And uh, with that, I think I have covered some uh, territory with you. And uh, I wish you a good day after I sign off. So my, my producer is saying be sure to sign off, so I will do that. Here we go. Always want to put the signature on the work here. And here I'll put uh, a happy face with a hat. There you go, cowboy hat. Call me uh, uh, cowboy, uh, co cowboy Bob. That's what we'll do. All right, you have a great, uh, great day today or evening, whenever you may be watching this. Bye-bye.